the middle of December, a time once reserved for early sunsets and mediocre pot roasts. But the fog has lifted, and now we find ourselves running the span of our American heartland at season's end, into a land of extremes, where ancient rivers still breathe, and the shadow of the late sun splinters onto the weathered truss of an old bridge. This is where we search for White River Browns. Stick around for a phenomenal float as Catch Outdoors nets another keeper from Cotter, Arkansas, home of the world record German brown trout and the sacred stomping grounds of pro guide Cody Milton. At the end of the most trying year, it was nothing but new beginnings. We're going down south, so they might not be selling beer late at night, so we gotta stop before whatever's considered late. It's a little down. Correct? Oh, yeah. Coming forward. Okay. Hold on, let me get my hand out. Go ahead. Some things just don't wash away. Like a rusty undercarriage or cracks in the cement. But the sticky film of a crowded city does the minute you escape its trappings. And that typically means a drive south over iron flat land, through fields that lie fallow, and in between the fan blades of your own desire. Under the auspice of light, of dark and the measured glow of our own devices. Guys, hi, hi. I tell myself when I tuck my jeans in there. I tell myself, Dusty, everything's gonna be all right. Like, I'm hoping y'all teach me some egg stuff because I can't I, keep them I, I, on. Duke will have to let you know. Really? Oh, he's got a fairy wand. Oh, dude, it's perfect right now. It's perfect hey, Duke. right now. Hey, Duke. We can launch. That part not moving. We'll launch here and go up. Yeah. At least you, for the first one. Um, it's, yeah, you'll need. Do you, have, do you have, Put waders on if you have them. So we're kind of in a, in a land of extremes here. Uh, it's gonna be heating up to about 72 degrees today, but right now it's 28 degrees and we have ice on the windshield. But uh, we're super excited because it's that, it's that launch excitement. Uh, we made a, a long road trip. We're here in Arkansas, we're on the White River. Uh, we are about to uh, cast for hopefully a big brown trout. And uh, the whole crew is just sort of anxious here. So we'll check in with you in a little bit and uh, we'll see what we got for you. On some trips, it isn't until two or three days into it that you settle in and start to realize the magnitude of your environment. It's like a case of hindsight happiness, where how special or unique a place is isn't realized or appreciated until after the fact. 
Not on this morning. It was clear from the frosty start that great times were upon us. We grinned and we chuckled. The child was easy to see in all of us, pressed up against the adult in our faces. As each twist of the current and subsequent spin of the kayak showcased something I had never seen before, I asked myself if a more proper panorama existed. If so, I knew nothing of it. Late morning waved and greeted an early afternoon. The energy hadn't faded in any of us, but our legs were starting to ask some real questions. As a pale sun bounced across the jagged ridgeline, we warmed up not only to the moment, but also to each other. We opted for the strength of engine power to counter the thigh-burning force of the fast current and soon fell directly into the pleasant groove of the day. The silly put the bird in the sky while we all broke into different groups, each one setting controls for up river. The entire stretch of water was ours, and the only audience was cloudless sky and leafless trees. Catch pros Jamie Brode and Dwayne Beatty partnered up and soon found themselves in the middle of a fast bite. They were mostly fishing holes and small depressions in the main river current. I think they were mostly having fun. I reckon they spent the better half of the afternoon reeling in rainbow trout, while the rest of us spent the afternoon reeling in our better halves. Either way, you can bet some cold beers around a warm fire is gonna round out the whole equation. There we go. Oh, that's a good one. Get the net. Oh, no! I hate 10 pound line. I mean, I barely pulled off. I literally thought like right now the river's starting to fall back this way you see that dusty like this whole bar it's actually the, the current off that bar is coming towards us oh yeah yeah, yeah. so you can throw off you throw at it and just reel it towards right. you yeah Another one down. <laughs> yeah. It's a little butter brown. It's a baby mama. Is it? Yeah. All right, last cast. Nighttime. It creeps in fast on the White River, you just kill it. or any river far from the glow of the city. Both sky and water, once separated by a clear horizon, now melt together into an oily black, and the temperatures remind you it's December. The only real way to honor the day was to build it a burning shrine. So we did. We talked, then we laughed, and then the stars came out. Stop 
Split gas. I'm saying if we can split the if we can split the kayaks between two boats, mm -hmm. we'll probably make it up pretty easy. Mm -hmm. I just don't know. I just, I don't know. I just want y'all to realize how close that went. Like it's like three minutes up the road, probably. Yeah. Like I seriously, even just to start the day, I still think it would be easier. You watch upstream mm -hmm. and just fish now because it's not far at all. On a 34 degree morning, it's not outside the norm to stoke up the previous night's fire. Beneath coordinated layers of thin cotton and Gore-Tex, we sip caffeine and forget about time. All we know is when the sun is just above those treetops, we're late. It's time to grab your jacket, your briefcase, and go. So we just got out, the river's a little low. We had a little bit of a fiasco with the boat being stuck on the rock, but uh, it's really good conditions. It's warming up just a little bit. They're calling for rain, but that's not going to stop us. In fact, uh, Cody lets us know that the trout fishing is really good in the rain. So uh, it's a new day, it's a new dawn, and um, we're looking for big browns. Let's go. Speeding over six inches of boulder strewn water in a jet boat with a nervous sounding engine on a cold morning is one of life's more interesting moments. All right, Dustin. What's up, brother? Let's hammer here. Watching a person awkwardly handle fly fishing gear for the first time is another. Oh, that was actually a good take. You see that, Dusty? Like, I've got, like, my lead line's way down river right now, so yeah. I'll just flip it like that, right. get the slack back out. Well, you know, make the cast a little longer. Despite Cody's guidance and clear demonstration, I wasn't able to cast really far, and I didn't land a fish. More practice is needed, much more. Baby. Which is okay. It's a baby. Right. Because practice doesn't mean perfect, it means being unafraid to get better. Really watch your line and just see how slow you can do it. Like, watch it with your head all the way forward, all the way back. All the way forward, all the way back. Be peaceful with the ride, that's it. Do you ski? Fly fishing's a lot like skiing. People look like they're out of control, but they're being so finesse. Totally. It's true. I don't know, it's just like anything. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, now it is. I'm a little more ill-equipped for this than I thought I was. <laughs> it's gonna take some practice, man. Don't call me a natural. Well, the left-handed reel is goofing me up, but you know, whatever. Like your main line doesn't get way downstream and start dragging your egg up. Because as soon as your main line starts going downstream, you're raising your fly off the indicator. You know what I mean? Who is in the middle of your experiences? I mean at the very center, because I doubt it's anyone but you. That's just how we're hardwired. It may sound selfish and repulsive, but the truth is we can only peck and nibble at how it might be to experience life from the perspective of others. That we are islands is only because of the space between and what you can't see underneath. If you float far enough, for long enough, you'll eventually land on other truths. That we are connected, and that we're able to understand ourselves best in the light of one another. Eventually, we got back to the gear I'm used to, and back to catching bigger fish.
don't want to squeeze this guy too much, but you can just see how beautiful these guys are. And uh, we just had a moment here as Cody uh, raised a uh, really 22-incher behind us and right now lost one. What would you say, Cody? 13, 14, 15 pounds? Yeah, I mean, it was over 30 inches. I mean, these are beautiful, and we're, we're, it's a phenomenal outing, but, but mark my words, those are the ones we're going for, and I think we're real close. So let's put her back. Nice little guy, beautiful fish, but he's a junior. We've lost some good ones. Come on, be a good one. Be a big one. He's not. He's not. He's got the hot hand on me. I went cold as I've gotten angry. Huh? Well, I got that black. I, I, got I switched angry. to the black jerk. Did you? Did you? Picked him on top of him. Good call. Box? Good call. In the box. Put him in a box, V. So we are on one of the, the most prime stretches in the entire world for German brown trout. According to our guide here, conditions couldn't be more perfect. We have overcast skies, we have rising water that's fast, and we have rain that's breaking up the surface, and this jerk bite is starting to pop. We're getting some really good fish, and um, it looks like we're coming up on a stretch that's just renowned for uh, big ones. Another double. I think I have a good one. Go, Cody. Dude, they get up current. It's like Man, an that's a nice one. Ooh, we got two. We got two. Ooh, what's up with our double? We're on. Ooh. Another decent you need brown. Need up there? No, it's it's like the same one. same size. A little duo pick here, huh? Oh yeah. My drag came out. Whoa, that's decent. Very nice. Best cut for Drew Brown Trout Cow. <laughs> <laughs> and they're up a lot more shallow than they normally are. In the box. In the box. And that's the thing too. Big fish, I mean, yeah, like you want to think they set up all behind eddies and it's all perfect. And a lot of fish do, like you. We've caught a lot, you know, perfectly, like on these little rock seams and stuff. But dude, a lot of those bigger fish are like open water predators, like a lot more like a pelagic fish, because they can be. I mean, they're not worried about anything like these 20-inch brown trout are. Do you net anything? We're okay. Yeah. We net the aesthetics. Right when I was doubting, never doubt. Tiger Woods always says, you know, most people give up when they're very closest. It's true. Is like you're expent when you give up, but usually it's about what it takes. Well, give up when you're the closest. Yeah, I've been guilty of that in my life. Absolutely, got him. He jumped good. Jumping better. Jumping better. That's a pan fryer. Yeah, This is where you get the hooks in the hand. They're slowly getting bigger. Slowly getting bigger. Yeah. Bigger bites. The weather's like this. It's perfect. It's perfect. He's right. He's right. The weather was perfect. Yeah, perfect for rolling around yeah. on the ground like kids. Woo! Perfect for fist pumps yeah. and for wide self-congratulatory grins into the camera. Perfect for admiring the beauty of these bespeckled trout, and perfect Fair. for letting them go Fair. and watching them swim back awesome. to their Good cold, job, man. rocky Thank homes. You. Might help that heartbreak a little bit from earlier. No. <laughs> a lot of these baits really are made to throw in current, so you kind of gotta you gotta find the right ones that actually perform with you know, whenever there's 12,000 cubic feet per second of water coming out of the dam, um, which they're like we were. I guess we had. 
right at 18,000 cubic feet a second the other day, and today we've had about 10,000, which is fun. It makes it, it makes it unpredictable, and I've always felt like it makes it where you can't just keep hammering the same area because it changes so much. I mean, just based on a little flow, because they can go, you know, anywhere from 1,000 cubic feet a second to close to 20,000 cubic feet a second. That are tournament fishing, like it's a whole new mindset. You know, it's just a different mindset. It's like you can go fishing all, like you know, fishing and catching fish. But dude, when you're around tournament anglers, like it's it's a different vibe. You know, am I right, Dusty? It's like, yeah, I mean, it's totally different. Like you learn more, like yeah, I mean, you should, you learn more about handling pressure. It's like seeing yeah. how different guys are, seeing how different guys are reacting, knowing where they're sitting after day one, things like that, dude. You learn from stuff like that, especially as a kid. And it's like, especially just fishing with guys like, you know, Greg Bohannon and good anglers that I've been paired with. Like, that goes a long way, but dude, being around them is just as important. If you're, if you're not learning from an experience or if you don't have an open mind on these things, I mean, you're, you're, you're shooting yourself. I mean, there's no such thing as knowing at all. There's no such thing as perfection. There's always room to grow. This is a this is a this is a trip of first for me. Many first, um, first first fly rod experience, uh, first White River experience, first jet boat experience, uh, fishing jerk baits for brown trout, German brown trout. First experience there. So I just I mean it's just, just sponge. I'm with I'm with the guy that really knows what he's doing. So it would be really dumb of me to not take advantage of that opportunity because right off the bat this is something that I'd, I'd come back and do on my own or come back and hire him in a heartbeat. So it's uh, it's you know I mean and sometimes you could learn what not to do as well. <laughs> you know. God, that's a nice one. Yeah! Oh, you got that, Pete? Yeah. You got the, the right key. That's a right. Oh, yeah. The whole thing's sideways. Yeah. Oh, beautiful. That's awesome. Very nice, man. What a gorgeous fish. Let's get her back in the water. <laughs> They're just getting bigger, man. And there we stood, under gray cloud, driving rain, and hungry eagles, netting brown trout on a white river, while the concrete slabs and latticed framework of the bridge towered above, like an old monolith, rusty, proud, and covered in bird shit, standing in a cold December sun, a monument dedicated to connecting the phase of your first life to that of your second. Day three, man, some chilly morning temps, nothing, nothing out of the normal. Our water flow is remaining in a consistent zone, and, uh, and Cody over here says it should be good fishing. Uh, we're looking at a little snow flurries a little bit later in the day, but it's still going to be overcast, and uh, that's good for the bite. Um, we got on some decent browns yesterday, but we weren't able to land them, and the really big ones got away. It's just a matter of hoping they commit to that bite, hoping they get hooked, and hoping we can put them in the boat. But a day on the water is never a bad day, so anything goes, and uh, it's day three for the adventure. So come on and join us. And it does work like that. One phase of your life ends, and another begins. By luck, circumstance, or by a little human agency. It can take the span of a lifetime, or the span of a bridge in Arkansas. There's nothing wrong with early sunsets and pot roasts late in the year, but in this phase, I'll save my own daylight and choose to spend any extra hours alive in the piercing sleet with icy hands, eyes wide open, impassioned by the rush of a trillion neurons firing off inside, 
each one responding to the wide array of sensory input from the outside world. It changes every day. Um, and that's what I mean I like about bass fishing. It's, it's so seasonal, dude. Some things get so, like, you know, just reputation, like, it just, like, it doesn't change that much. A lot of, a lot of fishing places don't. But, dude, rivers, they change daily, yearly. I mean, it's amazing. Just seeing the river right now, you kind of take for granted how many brown trout we caught. Because, I mean, like, most of the days we're probably catching 20 to 30 plus brown fish. And they're very concentrated on these shoals. And below them, feeding on those eggs coming down the river. You really got to see how many brown trout are in the river this time of year. Where if you would have came in May, like, it's so much more dependent on just, like, shade pockets. Or, like, fishing these deeper holes for those big browns. Like, they don't run up on these shoals like we're getting them. So it's kind of special. Like you get, you get to see some cool stuff. Now, I've been guiding for man, I guess it's about eight years now. There was a few years I was down in Florida playing on some mini tours and stuff. So I didn't, I didn't. There was like a couple years I didn't guide, but I've guided fully for about four years now. You know, do anywhere from like 30 to 40 trips a year. Not like full time, but when I'm home, you know how much we travel. We're on the road a lot. But when I am home, dude, especially this time of year, I love, I mean, I'll, I'll be on the river probably three, four times a week. I come from a unique situation where, yeah, my grandpa's house still is on Kentucky Lake, like back in the Blood River, and, you know, dad's, like, that's that was his parents, so he started fishing professional, kind of in the mid-80s, doing some of the Red Man stuff. Man, I think I fished my first tournament on Lake Washington, actually, when I was like nine. Yeah, and then like the next week we were down on Fork, and it was just like family vacations were going to tournaments, like that was all we ever did. How do we do it at Catch Outdoors? In carefully planned steps. Step one, dull fillet knife. Step two, a bunch of different powders and seasonings. Step three, mix in more. Four, add some freshly filleted rainbow trout. Five, drop them in a pot of oil and fry to a crispy golden brown. Last, well, just crack a cold beer and enjoy. What are we gonna throw, jerk baits? Jerk baits, or uh, if somebody could cough up some top water somewhere, maybe we can find some. I threw. Some I left the box water. at home, man. I left the box at home. We got bug bait. We decided to give it one last hurrah, but this time in the middle of the night. We whipped around jerk baits in the shallow ripples of the river and lost sight of the contours of the land. There he is! Thunder us, there he is! All we could do really was stand in the center of the boat and make long casts to the very edge of our adventure. Shining lights on the fish that swam like ghosts in the pools below.
there's a boat and like six kayaks sitting here. <laughs> and that's, what I, that's what I was saying. Yeah. <laughs> if only there was a way to get out there if farther. If only there was a way to get to those fish right there. <laughs> <laughs> That is a wrap. Head back to Chicago to catch headquarters. How close? How close are you to losing all of this? How close is one phase of your life to the next? And will there be any flame left in the solemn glare that the face of one phase gives to the other? You can throw some logs in the fire, be content to sit around and watch things burn until the haunting specter of the rising smoke is all that's left. Do you want to live in greatness? Then immerse yourself in love, in people, in the fire of your passion, in the places that make you feel like you're a part of it all. We are Ketchup.